So hi, Nathan. How are you? Good. And yourself? Good. I'm great. Thanks very much. So uh, great to uh, talk to you, albeit in strange and unprecedented times. Um, and I love your background there, Matt. Uh, 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 Matt, Matt, Machu Picchu, Machu Picchu, Machu Picchu, Machu? Peru. Yes. Um, so, how's it? It's got to be a story behind that image there. It's awesome. I was, I was in Cusco, um, November two thousand eighteen, on a medical ministry um, mission oh. trip. Wow. We did that for a week. We were helping the underprivileged uh, receive medical supplies and services. Amazing. And then we did a four day excursion up to Machu Picchu at the end of that. So. Wow. And this is this is your you got this shot up there. Wow. Yes, I was standing on top of the mountain. Yes. Wow, that's cool. I think the times we're, we're, we're living in right now, sometimes it feels like we're standing up on top of a mountain alone on some days, eh? <laughs> Especially when you're running a business. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to do was, you're, you're obviously, uh, I don't know what you're whether you're titled as CEO or managing director, but uh, you're a principal owner, I believe, of uh, Gelderman Landscape uh, Services. Uh, that's the correct title for the company. Um, based out of Waterdown, Ontario. Yes. Um, I think Gelderman uh, is a name synonymous with the industry, uh, one of the probably leading companies in the industry uh, in, in, in Ontario, uh, very prominent. And, and I've seen some of your work, we featured some of your work on our Outdoor Lifestyle magazine channels. Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. I've also had the pleasure of uh, uh, being on a tour of your facility and uh, pretty impressed and very impressed with um, the style and the way you communicate and run the company. And you can see that filter down to all of the team, I, I, I felt, I must say. So what I wanted to do was um, catch up with you. And we're, we're, we're video or we're, sorry, we're interviewing various different people in the industry. And we'll put these videos out maybe once a week, maybe twice a week. And I, I just thought it was, it'd be really interesting to ask you uh, some of the background to the company um, uh, how you ended up in, in, in uh, Gelder, owning Gelderman uh, Landscape Services, how you're managing the current crisis, because that's where we are right now uh, in, at the end of April 2020. And, uh, and then tell us about some, some other business endeavors you've been getting up to lately. So how about Gelderman? How did you end up? Um, Nathan Helder is not Nathan Gelderman. So how did you end up uh, in the company? All right, good question. So... Uh, Gelderman started in 1955, so this is our 65th year in business. Mm -hmm. um, so that you know that's good. That's good in a lot of ways, and but yet in other ways, especially in this crisis, we've realized we have a lot of baggage as well. Um, but uh, yeah, so Gelderman's been focusing on residential uh, landscape construction, design build, uh, also commercial maintenance and snow. Those are the two major uh, revenue streams. Um, we do uh, plant health care, including fertilizing and, and uh, poration type of things like that. Um, but yeah, we've been, uh, you know, uh, growing over the years. Uh, the last few years, we probably have uh, desi I've decided to streamline the business and actually reduce sales to uh, tighten up some things. Um, very thankful I did that, uh, you know, pre-COVID. That's interesting. Um, That's interesting. We'll get, we'll get into more things that we've done just in the last six weeks. Um, Mm. But no, so my story is a little different. Um, I married uh, my wife, Michelle, uh, 22 years ago, yes, uh, and started with Gelderman 14 years ago. So I did. I married into the family, but I had my own career working with dairy farmers on how to feed their cows. And I quit that job on a Friday, started with Gelderman on Monday, mm -hmm. and I was going to be the new guy that was going to take over. So I came into the business no knowing very little about landscape construction. Uh, my background really was about sales, uh, dealing with people, and dealing with numbers and finances. Um, so I've, of course, learned the business, um, but I've tried not to learn it too much. I rather rely on other people who specialize in their areas of, uh, you know, and who are passionate about horticulture. Yes. Uh, so I do look at our business probably from a, a different perspective. Uh, although after 14 years, uh, you know, I, I have my own head trash now. Yes. And, you know, I... You know, of course, I've learned a lot of it as I go. Um, and so, yeah, my, my journey has been, you know, I became the, uh, I was a new guy, started in 2006. Um, after one year, I became president. Um, I fall in love. We had a, a five-year succession plan that got fast-tracked into one year. Wow. Um, I became president <laughs> in 2007 and ever since. Wow. Um, you know, at that time, we were probably 50 staff. Uh, we peaked out probably two years ago at about 140 staff. Uh, we're probably down well now of course we're down a little bit more uh, with covid um, but over that period um, i really learned how to understand the numbers 
uh, because I purchased the business, I had to make sure that the numbers worked. Uh, I was a third generation. Uh, anybody who's gone through uh, generational changes, they know it's very expensive. Um, and so, you know, uh, yeah, so, you know, we grew the business, uh, working on uh, the succession plan or the, the payment plan with my father-in-law, who's uh, totally out of the business for the last, I'm going to say, 10 to 12 years. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that brings us to, let's say, you know, March the, uh, March 2020. Yes. Um, and so, you know, I, I just wrote some stuff down yesterday, actually, you know, what did the company look like prior to COVID, right? And, and you know, we were... Uh, moving along and making changes. Uh, we had high expectations for 2020. We had a new marketing plan. We had uh, brought in some new people, uh, exchange, you know, uh, changing some processes. Uh, we were really looking excited for the change and growth for 2020. That was the year for yes. us to really um, hit a home run. Yes. You know, we made a lot of changes in 2019, 2018 to get streamlined and get focused. And we were just ready to go. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, March, beginning of March, we had a little bit of snow. We were in the snow business, but then by this first, second week of March, there was no snow and it was like nice warm weather. And here we go. So we started doing spring cleanups in March already, um, utilizing some of our um, hourly staff or guaranteed hour staff from the, from the winter side. Construction had started some jobs. And then, uh, well, then COVID hit. Mm. Right? So, mm. um, and I, I recall back to those first few days, right? And I, I think of, you know, how I responded personally and how my team responded. Um, you know, I've always said over in the last few years that in a crisis is where leaders are born. Absolutely. Leaders yes. are born in a crisis, right? So if I look back now, I was working on gut impulse a lot. Yes, yes. Not, like nobody's trained. No. There's, there's, no plan. There's, 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 no, there's no plan for this. Yeah, the books weren't no. written yet. And so when I look back and say, okay, what did I do? Well, I took action. Mm. If I could say two words, I took action. Uh, I was scared. Um, yes. But yet I was uh, confident when we made decisions. So yes. I made it my mantra not to go on Facebook during the day, not to read any hype, uh, not to watch the news, not to go on the internet um, from that perspective, but to uh you know speak speak to my staff daily and my my vps so my senior team and just make sure that are we on the same page what, what, what's our next step and we had meetings every single morning and we would chat about okay, what are we working on today because mm -hmm. back in march uh mid-march you think of the march break right everybody yes. went off and school, yes yes and then it was got extended for another week but back in that week there um you know it was really about live day by day yes I, at that point um you know, I think my faith got stronger, uh, my, my, my belief system or my faith in God, because I can't predict anything in the future. Uh, and I, yet I know that I need to be living day by day and trust in him. Yes. And so that really helped me get through those initial first couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so well, Fields, if, I can, if, I, if I can just jump in for a second, just to make an observation. So Fields, for, for looking from the outside in, it feels to me what, what you've just told us about how you kind of navigated those, that first while is interesting because what you straight away you said you took action and you you went you you went into kind of hyper communication mode so let's talk let's connect every day and that's kind of a common theme with some people i've spoken to leaders but i i almost feel that you know when i was in your company last year observing looking from the outside in um you could see that the company's foundation was built on communication it, it wasn't, you know, uh, like a patriarchy or something where you're just sitting at the top of a, a triangle, you know, uh, pr pronouncing what's going to happen. It was collective. Uh, you were open to change. Uh, felt like the uh, the team from the bottom up had a, had a voice. Not necessarily everything was implemented. I, I don't mean it that way, but there was a, there was there was a mode of communication. Or for me, from an outside perspective, I could certainly feel that there was a culture. I would say of communication and kind of openness in the company. I mean, you spoke to me a little bit about, or you spoke to the group a little bit about sharing the P and L numbers and stuff like that with, with a certain certain level. So uh, it feels to me, and I, I'm not not sure whether you'd have a comment on it, but it feels to me that, and we'll talk a little bit later about your Southbrook and what you're trying to help you're, you're trying to help companies there to to to, to manage their companies better. And I think communication. You already had a great communication channel. Um, 
And it nearly feels to me that when this hit, even though it was different and it was unprecedented, that that previous building of that culture must have stood to you. Uh, mm -hmm. Rather than a company who don't communicate, they would kind of put their heads down. Would that be yeah. yeah, prior to uh, COVID, I was doing um, uh, video um, messages to our staff. So we, we started last year already doing texting to our staff instead of doing a newsletter and trying to send out emails. Not everybody yeah. has data on their phones, right? Absolutely. So prior to COVID, I would, I would do a weekly or a monthly uh, video message explain how the company's doing, what are we working on, what are, what's in store. And I remember that week doing one on like every other day and sending it out by text, the video message, because it was so much unknown, right? So, and, and I've, I've learned that, you know, I need to be, um, as a leader of this company, positive, uh, but realistic. And, you know, I think of the Stockdale paradox, you know, where, um, you know, the, the, the Vietnamese POW, you know, why did he survive to the end? Well, because yes. he faith yes but he wasn't an optimist he was a realist and said okay yeah. i have you know, faith i need to have hope but i can't hold my breath thinking it's going to be uh one week two weeks three week and then we'll be back to normal yeah and so from day one i was like okay um this this looks a little different than this is not just a quick uh two weeks and will be over yeah so how do i take action and plan Right. This so, is not a bad rain season, you know. It's it's no, this is not. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad snowstorm where it's, yeah. it'll be all cleaned up in a, in a few days. Type yeah. thing. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I focus on the one day at a time. Uh, and and the other thing is that I had to be as grounded as possible so I could be that um, that beacon of light and and hope for my staff. Yeah. Because my staff, I could see it in their eyes, the panic. Yeah. And, and the became, fear, that the fear, panic. yeah, and the unknown, right? right? So. Um, I've always had a straightforward message and here are the facts and here's what we're going to do. Yes. So we, and that's we what people want to hear. And that's what people need to hear. You know, they don't need to hear the BS. They don't need to hear the, the no. you know, the, the, the waffle as they call it, you know, they need to hear, yeah, it is, this is, this is going to be tough, but here's what we're going to do. And that we have a plan. So remember, I think it was the last week of March where, um, on the Monday we were working yet Tuesday, we said, okay, we're not going to work for the rest of the week. We, the whole company was shut down. I said, I need to have this week to understand where we're at. And then on Friday, we'll make a decision for the following week. And at that point was when the, that first list came out. And when I looked at the list, I decided based on my understanding of the list and who I was talking to, I had direct contact with a bunch of different MPPs. Yep. Um, and I had, and, and this is where I learned that as a company owner, um, I have to be convicted in my actions. I have to take responsibility of my yes. actions. And I was okay with that. So I, we took a stand in this company to start doing spring cleanups right away. Yes. And, and because it said property maintenance services. And I said, yes. well, oh, how much more clear can it get? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It didn't say landscape contractors. but No, but I think that's, that's matter. a subcategory. It it's maintenance. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And uh, so, you know, um, we, we, I put that message out to our, our, our clients, our staff. And we said, we're going to start working. And if you, decide, if you choose not to have us on a property, that's okay. Yeah. Um, but we took action, right? Uh, we created the letters to communicate daily with the team. Uh, and then I went into action and said, okay, I need to talk to my vendors. And, and you know, I had comments. I just look at my uh, calendar. There's three or four Zoom calls. That, yeah, that and, it's a, it's a great, and it's a great call to make. And yeah, you spoke, again, but hearkening back to um, listening to, to presentations you did previously was um, that philosophy, uh, these are things that stuck in my mind that philosophy of treating your supplier as a partner, not as just somebody who you take goods from and try and get as much credit you can for. I mean, you even spoke about, hey, to, your, to talk, have a conversation with your supplier and say, hey, what if I paid you up front? You know, just different, kind of very different lateral ways of doing business. So again, I think you, I think you brought that to this situation again, but you already had great relationship with your suppliers. So the fact that you reached out to them, that kind of makes a whole lot of sense. So, so when I look at my calendar, I'm just looking over right now, the week of March the 23rd is when I met with all my vendors. So that's, how many weeks? That's early. Five, that's pretty early. Five weeks ago. That's pretty early. I'm going to stand Right again. away, right, right, so right away I contacted all of them. So, okay, here's where we're at. And here's what I'm predicting or forecasting. And yep. I took a, a while, like, so, like my insurance company, we had just signed our insurance was to be renewed on March 31st on, on based on premiums based on our plans. 
Yeah. Well, guess what? I, I contact them right away, and we got a, a major reduction. In of course. Of course. I'm yeah. forecasting, a, you know, a thirty percent cut. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Right. So it's it's taking the action, um, and I decided that this was not going to be a pause. It was going to be long lasting. Yes. And so I had to do the unfortunate thing of laying off. Yes. Uh, percent of my overhead. Yeah. And I did, you know, I, I laid off people that have been with the company for 25, 30, 40 years. Yes. Yeah. Uh, because it was what's in the best interest of Gelderman that has to come first. Yes. Unfortunately, yeah. Absolutely. My, my Absolutely. emotional, uh, you know, I, I can get, I'm not an emotion, a true emotional guy, but if I allow my emotions to design on how I can move forward, you do nothing. And no, you it's will never lay anybody off. And it's going to cloud your judgment. And in the end of the day, um, not doing anything damages everybody, you know, and I think people, you know, uh, again, it's, it's just being proactive, you know, and those are the tough decisions. Nobody likes to make those decisions. And those are the tough decisions that have to be made. So, so people, you know, over the last little while say, well, there's a wage subsidy coming, you know, um, like bring those people back. And like, when the money hits my bank account, then I'll bring them back. Because that's when you can. Exactly. Yeah, but so what I've, I guess, I guess the concern I was, I was worried about is like we could restrict our expenses going out, but I did not want to use my receivables and my landscape deposits to pay for uh, overhead now. Yeah. And and whittle that, you know, and, and whittle that uh, receivables down to nothing because yeah. those those deposits are meant for landscape projects, not meant for for overhead right now. Absolutely. Right. So, I understand that. And it's kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul and it's a, it's kind of a short term strategy, but that would come back. I, I totally agree. That would probably come back and bite you, you know, three, three, whatever, three, four months down the road. So I, I'm concerned for uh, many landscape companies where yeah. um, that they did not lay people off. They, yeah. they may think this is, might be a pause and they think they're, they're going to be, um, uh, you know, this is not going to affect their companies mm. um, because I believe next, August, September is when the, you know, because cash flow is always, um, it's not right today. It's going to be six months absolutely, from now. Absolutely. Six, so six months from now, we're going to go into the winter. Yep. And they're going to be cash poor. And yep. that's where we're going to see big, major stresses. We're not absolutely. seeing it now because right now we're getting deferrals and we're not working. So everybody's laid off. So yep. we have cash. Yep. But, soon, but to operate takes more cash to operate. Of course it does. Yeah, absolutely. So that's been my, I guess my fear, I guess, is that am I doing enough to get to the end? Mm. And, I'm always, and, and the end is, I have no clue when the end is. It could be like, what is, what's end mean? Yeah. Right? Uh, to think that we're going back to old days, like mm. where the, where we have lots of work and everybody's just calling in for stuff. No, no, it's, it's slowing down now already. Yeah, of course. Right? Of course. So, t so talk a little bit about, um, it's a, I think it's a nice segue into um, maybe talk a little bit about your Southbrook consulting business because I think uh, and just how, where their idea came from and, and how because I think that's very very applicable to, to at the moment um, because I think that whole um, advice helping helping uh, like landscape companies and other companies helping them um, build a model for their business a sustainable model as you I even seen your dashboard email the other day which makes total sense and uh, tell us about Southbrook, when you set it up and why you set and what's the goal? How, how does it, you know, what's, what's the goal of Southbrook to help companies? Yeah, so a yeah, great question. People ask me, so what are you doing having a consulting business and landscape business and how do you? <laughs> oh, so I, day, I, I, I know it's a great idea, so yeah. But, but at, at the end of the day, so when I, when I joined the, you know, this world, this profession of landscape contractors in general, uh, what hit me probably first and foremost when I first started is that, Many landscape contractors undervalue their abilities and their uh, the deliverables. What I mean by that is they're not charging enough. Many times um, they don't even know um, what you know what numbers they should have, um, and many times they don't even know where they're actually sitting until they get their uh, accountant-generated reports at the end of the year, and then they say, "Oh, that's that's what happened." So, are um, you are you is it your contention or your experience that that people just use like anecdotal pricing or just kind of like, ah, I think that, and they just kind of a little bit of fly by the seat of your pants because it's all, 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 always served them kind of well, but it's, oh, we'll, we'll do that. We'll charge whatever and we'll see what comes out in the wash. And in the meantime, they're not charging enough money and they have the fear of not getting the job. You know, I, 10 years ago, yes, it, it's definitely gotten better. 
right? Um, but there's a low cost of entry into this marketplace. So there's always more yes. people coming in yes. uh, that think they can be cheaper than when they work for somebody else to get the work. Got it. Uh, and they probably can be for the first little while. Um, no, it's, it, it's, it's just, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, swag, which I, I call scientific wild ass guessing going on. <laughs> um, you know, the likes of LMN have really helped the marketplace. Yes, but, yes. But garbage in, right? Garbage if you're in. Absolutely. budget in February, pre-COVID, yep. and you think that you're just having one month of no revenue, well, I think you're, you're wrong, but I hope I'm not wrong. But, I, you know, so revising your budgets is, is very important, right? And it, because your budget, especially in LMN, will determine what your hourly rates are. There you go. You're all, it's all connected. Now, so... So, so that's what, you know, what I noticed when I came into this industry is that many people do fantastic work, but are not getting paid for what they do properly. Mm. You know, you, you have a dishwasher in your house and you call for a technician to come to fix something, a drain issue, whatever else. And they're going to charge you $90 to show up and another $90 an hour. Yep. There's a young kid that's going to do the dishwashing, to, you know. Yep. So it's like, you know, we... You know, we, we buy expensive equipment. We're transforming backyard, backyard. Yes. We're beautifying God's creation, um, but yet we're too scared to charge for it. Yeah. So within the Gelderman, so, you know, I, you know, Gelderman was always about getting their numbers right. And, and my father-in-law was about that already too. Um, and so basically it was like, I was approached by uh, somebody who said, you know, what are you doing at Gelderman when you don't know anything about landscaping and you've taken this the third generation business to the next level? So then I sort of uh, highlight, okay, what, 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 what did I focus on? Like, what am I really doing here? And yes. it really is, at the end of the day, a strategy. It's where we're heading. It's the people side of things. And it's the, the, the money side of things, the, the financials and understanding your numbers. But would it be so, fair to say, and even just to jump in for a second, and again, these are just kind of observations. Would it be fair to say that, you know, you, you guys, I, I won't say obsessive, but you, you're pretty deep in the numbers nothing you know there's nothing glossed over it's kind of like it's the real numbers and you make sure you have the real numbers which again goes back to pre-covid numbers i'm absolutely not don't have any surprise that you've re you revised your budgets very quickly based on hmm, the world has changed so gelderman has that culture and you also show i think you, you spoke about hank from his even the, the all the estimate books and i can't remember what it was it was, it was kind of fascinating but again is that culture of what are the numbers? How much does this cost? What pro are we making a profit here? It's so important in the business because we can all be delusional. Activity is great, but how do you make money, right? Oh yeah, you know sometimes the people that are the busiest do the worst because they just they came and have they don't have time to stop and actually evaluate what they've been doing. Yeah, so that's what sort of got me started and uh, was somebody asking some questions and then I said, okay, so right now Southport Consulting, you know, we help business owners realize their dreams you have a dream you're not realizing it or if you're struggling to uh, maybe that's where i can help um, and then it, it's got it's growing further into more of an outsourcing company as well so um especially with covid now is that even within gelderman so i've laid off you know three office people and i only need them back for like one day a week but mm. how do you keep good talent one yes. day a week yes. you can't or how do you utilize a specific talent or resource in your company yes and so right now southbrook offers accounting services financial services and hr services across canada already yes yes and we'll be utilizing more of gelderman staff in southbrook and vice versa got it so that allows you to retain the talent and the expertise and that knowledge right yeah and then the biggest thing is with my Southbrook clients who are consulting clients we, and now we do their financials as well is that now they have monthly financials and they have better processes and they never had this in their life before. They would maybe have quarterly at best, cool. um, or, the, or at the end An of the year. Annual, I'm going to say, yeah, a lot of businesses. So yeah. they're so with, you know, I think post COVID now, you know, is that we have to be leaner as companies, and mm. yet we need to have our finger on the pulse and know our numbers even more so than ever before. Yeah, so that's where I I'm looking at. You know, this is as a you know an opportunity um, to help business owners even more so now. So is, is, is Southbrook exclusively landscape companies? Is, is that the kind of niche or is it wider than that? It, that is the niche. There is some other clients in there in that mix, but um, my, my expertise, you know, from a, you know, there's the bookkeeping, general bookkeeping accounting yeah. function. Yeah. But then there's that CFO function, yeah. the analysis side, yeah. where 
under the self brand, you can get all, you can get a general bookkeeper, you can get yeah. an accounting associate, but you also yeah. get a CFO. Yeah. And there's also those, um, there's, as we, as we know, you know, in terms of general business kind of knowledge, there's bookkeeping is bookkeeping, but there are nuances and, you know, techniques within businesses that are very valuable. Um, I mean, the, the, the landscape business, for instance, and this is just me thinking out loud, is is the stage payments there. It's not like a transactional thing where you buy no. something and get the money. So that, that's all important, right? The biggest thing that we do when we bring on, on board a new client is we, we actually destroy their chart of accounts and change them. <laughs> yeah. Because their, I'd imagine their, account, so, yeah. their accounting is set up for a manufacturing company. Got it. A general business company. Well, we all know in landscape in the landscape world, um, you know, your labor is important materials, but your equipment and your, uh, and your subcontractors and how you position that on your chart of accounts. There you go. I mean, you spoke about depreciation and again, I'm not going to get into the we me get into the weeds and that you can, but again, it, it was some very enlightening stuff in terms of, you know, buying, buying plant, you know, as, and, and having them on the boxes as a, as a, as a, you know, a capital acquisition that you depreciate or leasing it and using that as a business expense on the balance sheet. So even that's kind of interesting that people don't think of, right. They just don't have the experience. Or experience, but the know-how or the time, uh, you know, most business owners who in the landscape world get in it because they love transforming lives. They like to make memories with their clients. Uh, they didn't be, do it because they're an accountant first. No, Very few people are yeah. accountant first, right? So, yeah. and, that, and that's where Southbrook and my expertise come in, right? So I'm not the landscaper first. I never advise people on how to build better landscapes. Got it. Uh, maybe we can, I get, I'll help them on efficiencies. Got it, yeah. But not on design and which plant to use and which stone to use. I don't even, you know, I, admittedly, I don't even know sometimes what kind of stone they're using. <laughs> yeah. but, but it's more about business. Uh, the, up, the, up, uh, the bottom line, um, how to manage your business, basically. So e even more so now, and I've seen some of your correspondence going out from Southbrook because I'm subscribed uh, to, to, to the, the, the emails. Um, even now, I, I, I kind of seen uh, uh, an email, a really valuable one I read through. It was basically telling people, you know, stop. And, and think and here is some practical advice for you right now it was very it was very kind of visceral in a way but it was very real it was a it was like a cold shower moment and i thought that's really valuable for people i mean do you think people are they listening to that you're getting feedback or are you are, are not just what i'm just interested to know they are yeah um but i think it's still um it hasn't sunk in yet really okay because the money is coming in from the government uh, all our vendors have to be able to defer. Uh, you don't have to pay your rent yep. until you have to do all those other things and pay all those costs. Now next fall, that's when it's going to hit. It's true. It's true. So everything at the moment is being pushed down. It's pushed down the road. The government delay, came in right? and said, let's, okay, let's just keep you all at home. And here's some, here's, here's, you know, we have a couple of hundred billion dollars dispersed wherever way all that money's floating around the economy. Now that's all going to come to an end. And then it's going to be back to, you know, the real commercial reality. Yeah, and that's and that's, I fear for yeah, even myself. Like, and, that, and that's what like I, um, I'm always second guessing myself right now and think, okay, hey, have I done yeah. enough? Yeah. Uh, based on the last six weeks, yeah, we've done a lot, right? Um, we're far more engaged, right? I think if you know what happens, it needs to happen right now and, and to continue, is we need to communicate often. So we do daily Zoom calls at five thirty with the whole company, and we give everybody an update. And now we're using that actually for a culture thing. So we're doing employee spotlights and um, like today is throwback Thursday. Uh, yesterday was one, one day word Wednesday. And that's, Tuesday, that's, that's really, Tuesday, that, you know. so straight away that strikes me as being very, very important because you know, who wants to have it marked in their calendar? So, Oh God, I gotta hear, I gotta hear all the, the bad news today from, from Nathan and whatever, you know, on that zoom call, it's, it's basically, no, you, you've, you've turned it and just used it as a communication channel for other things. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And then, you know, keep taking action. But also one thing I learned is that uh, don't second guess myself. Okay. And uh, be convicted right through all this. I have been convicted that the decision we made was the right one. Um, and whether you desire to work or not to work, that's not the issue. The issue is, are you convicted and yes. stick to it? And yes. I've been respectful of others who have, have desired other things. That's fine. Um, and I think really speaking to my competitors. So, um, in the last month I've speak, I've spoken to some competitors more than ever in my life. Yeah. Which and, is interesting. Yeah. And, and they're good competitors, but 
normally when it's in the heat of things, you would never call them because it's like they're the other side, right? Yeah, of course. Um, but today we're all in this, you know, very different. Together, right. as competitors, we're in this, right? Oh, totally agree. Totally agree. And as business owners, and that's what I know for my software companies as well, is that they get to talk to another business owner that actually lives their pain every day. Yes, yes. Well, I can speak to them, you know, and they call me and say, Nathan, hey, I heard this. What do you think? Well, I heard the opposite, or I heard this. There you right? go. Yeah. Or here's, what I, here's how I dealt with that situation. Or like even in terms of the wage subsidy, I'm sure that's a big one where people are probably saying, hey, what should they do? And you'd have a perspective on that as a business owner, not just as an accountant or a tax specialist yeah. or somebody like that. So that's where I think the value comes in of, of Southbrook. And, and even I, I love your comment there about reaching out to competitors. I think that's great. And I think that's a big positive that's come out of this. this you know, if there's any positives out of COVID, people are much more... Uh, willing and, and prepared to connect and talk and communicate. Um, it's taken away a lot. Of, I feel it's taken away some barriers that people would have had before. As you said, you'd never reach out to a, 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 one of your competitors because they're competitors, right? But now it's yeah. you pick up the phone and people will actually pick up the phone to you and say, yeah, hey, how are you doing? Oh, well, here's how I'm doing. Yeah, so that, that's been very, very different. So yeah. I think um, Southbrook, uh, as, as, a, as a kind of in the time it's in, your Southbrook consulting company, it's kind of, it's probably more valuable now than it's ever been, I, I would think, to companies. Yeah, no, it, it, it's just that it's hard, right? So, because now you don't have the revenue, so of you, course. you don't want to spend money on a consultant. Of course, of course. <laughs> well, you know, that's, that's you know, um, and yet, you know, I belong to a peer group myself, and now I need them even more so, right? Yes. So it hurts, because it yeah, you put yeah. money out for it, but it's the resources, it's the um, support, um, it's the, uh, yeah, just now I need that more than ever. Well, it's the value in that, right? It's the value in that. That's, that's, an, that's a, it's a value for your business. I totally, I totally get it. And I totally respect everybody's, as you said, sitting at home and saying, you know, okay, you know, these bills are deferred or, or, or whatever, but we're all looking to the future and saying, Hmm, what's going to happen? When's it going to happen? And, you know, I, I think that's, that's important to be realistic about that, you know? But, but a big thing moving forward for companies, and this is for Gelderman too, is that, like I had a meeting this morning with my executive team and uh, we were talking about mediocrity and how in the past, when you have sales, sales can, can, can cover a lot of sins. And when you don't have sales, also the, all the bullshit's still there now and you can see it and you, you, we've gotten rid of a lot of it. Got it, yes. A lot of sins have moved on and how do you prevent that from coming back? Yes, that's a great, that's a great call. It's like, that totally reminds me of Warren Buffett's, you know, famous saying, you know, it's only when the tide goes out, you see who's not, who's not wearing any clothes. So you're right. Okay. Profit so, and, and great business and great times can, can cover all that. But the, the, the key is now is that, um, like, is to hold, hold your standards higher. Uh, or at the same level, but make sure you, you stick to it, right? Keep and that's my, we're self included, right? So we only want the best talent. We will not excuse poor behaviors because poor, poor behaviors re return or give poor results. So this is your mediocrity. So you like it's drive out mediocrity, but then I think the second important point you just made there was keep keep it keep it out. Like use it going forward yeah. to not let it creep back in again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and when you're small, you can be nimble and that's fine. But when you're larger and yes. 65 years, 65 years in business, you've inherited or you, you know, it's like the person who is like, yeah. oh, remember what they used to look like when they got married? Wow, was I that skinny? Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember getting, you know, where did all that weight come from? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Your that's business true. is the same way. There's, the same there's thing. You're right. It just happened. And, and now with no sales, you're like, okay, why do we do that? What, yes. What's that for? Yes. What's that for? Right? Got it. Got it. So that's the um, opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what, you know, we need to be invoicing faster, even faster yet and, and collect on that money, not wait for the money to come in, Got you it. know, speed that up. Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's where this is really, you know, COVID has been positive that way for our business. Yes. Got it. So can I ask you just to kind of uh, bring the conversation to a, to a conclusion and it's been amazing talking to you. Um, and I think people listening to, to, to this, uh, and I, this is my prediction when I reached out to ask you, will get value from it. That's the, that's the goal. If somebody gets a bit of value from it and listens, and even if they're not in the landscape business, I think there's a lot of business principles that, and, and advice you've, you've kind of imparted there that I think is very relevant. What, what, like, what, what are some key um, pieces of advice? And I know you touched on them, but if, you, if, you, if somebody's out there running a business, I fear for people who aren't, who are maybe a little bit, 
no disrespect to them, but a little bit delusional. They're saying, oh, when, when, when everything opens up, we're going to go back to normal. It's going to be bang, back to normal. The economy is just going to go bang. Well, I, I don't think it is. You know, people talk about a U-shaped recovery. People talk about a, a tick recovery. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to be tough time. You said we're in a recession right now. I think that's a, that's a very real uh, synopsis of it. You're right. Um, and I think it's going to be in a tough go- going forward to, for, for a period of time. What advice, or the key advice, would you give to a company right now who is kind of maybe watching this and sitting and, and thinking, what, 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 what should I do? You know, I mean, what, what, would, you, what would you say some, some key kind of actions should be taken right now? Okay, so these, these actions are stuff that I'm doing myself. Right? Yes. So this is, not, this is not advice. This is what yep. I'm doing. This is practical uh, advice, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and not, not, not a particular order, but number, number one that comes to mind first is, it starts with me, is, is my level of engagement and connectedness to the business. And you can be busy, 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 but it doesn't mean you're always connected and well and connecting with, with your clients and with your staff. Um, so for me, uh, what I've learned about myself is that uh, as a leader is, is regularly or daily at this point connecting with our staff. And, and when you sense something, don't just brush it over. Give them a call and say, hey, how are you doing? I, I can sense you're worried. Got it. And talk it through and encourage them. Right. So this should be happening all the time anyways. But in a crisis mode, it, it happens. Right. Uh, the other thing is, is when I look at our business is reevaluating our processes and things that we've always done, you know, we've always done it that way. I've always said that's been the seven most expensive words. Yes. But today, even more so. Yes. Right. And, and don't be scared to make those tough decisions. Now, if you're looking for advice and you don't like what you're hearing, what most people do is ask another person, another person, another person until they hear what they want. And then Got they it. Do that. Got it. Today, it's going to require you to, to stick your neck out and to make a decision on your own. Because if you wait for everything, just like now, if we're waiting for Doug Ford to, to say, yes, go, if you were holding your breath, you'd be dead. Because that yes. means like weeks ago. Yes. yes. Right? So you have to make a decision. You have to move forward and make a decision. And not make a decision is still decision. Inaction yes. is still some kind of action. Yes. Doing nothing is still a choice, right? So, yes. um you know, I've probably not reacted quickly enough. I've seen things in the past and said, oh, yeah, you turn a blind eye and you see something else and get busy. But today, I'm dealing with it up front right away. Yes. Right? So a higher level of expectation for myself. Um, when I think of uh, the types of tasks that some of our managers are doing, um, you know, in the past, you say, well, how do I change somebody really quick? Well, it's kind of hard, but in COVID now, because jobs are at stake, now now's a chance to change your business. So if you wanted to have managers working with your crews, now's the time to do it. Got it. And so we've that's done. great we, advice, actually. That's we were great planning advice. to do this, but this has forced us and allowed us to do it, and people are happy to be working. So use it as a catalyst for, for those changes that maybe you were just putting off. That's a great, great piece of advice, yep. I think. Um, you know, from a marketing standpoint, uh, you got to reevaluate. Everybody sitting at home, digital is the way to go. So if you were thinking, yeah, I should do more digital, I should maybe change, you know, maybe print is not quite the same. Uh, print print's going to be having a hard, like the print is, business yeah. was doing bad before. It's going to do it much hard, much worse yeah. now. It is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So your return on your investment is going to be far, far higher on the, on the digital marketing side of things. Yes. Absolutely. Right? Including email marketing, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Um, the other thing is when it comes to your fun, your business is, do you know where you stand and do you have a cash flow statement more than tomorrow? Yeah. Tomorrow, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So from a financial standpoint is, uh, your bank, everybody's bank's going to be, um, you know, looking at everybody's businesses differently now. So do you understand your own numbers? Right, so I just signed up a client this week, uh, a non-landscaping client, because he wants to understand his balance sheet better. He knows, he goes, I don't know anything about it. I said, well, there's a lot of stuff on there that can help you go through a period like this. And he's like, how do you mean? I said, well, it, it's, it's, it's the ratios, what the ratios mean, and wh- why will the bank not give you more money? And Got, how it. Those changes? Got it. I remember you said that in their tour, actually, yeah. 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 Right, so now, you know, moving forward, I'm, I'm closer to our numbers than ever before. And I was close before already, but yeah. for businesses who are not, who don't know where they stand um, or they, you know, haven't adjusted their budget um, or they don't even have never done a budget before, um, you know, you may be forced to now. Get on top yeah. of it, basically. Get on top of your numbers. Know your numbers inside out now. Now is the yeah. time. And, and ask for help, right? So, you know, asking for help is not a sign of weakness, but it's, it's a sign of awareness. Yep. Right? 
Um, I don't know a lot about you know how to build a deck. Uh, that's okay. I know who does, um, and I'll ask them for help. Right? Got it. Yeah. Uh, uh, what you know? What else is there? Is just looking at your operations and seeing how can we streamline things. This whole last month, we've been you know uh, working one person to a truck, and staff members have been driving to site, and we've been paying them a flat rate. Um, after a month, we're reevaluating our numbers and our efficiencies are like really high. There's no downtime. There's just mm. one person driving now. So mm. we're looking at now, okay, do we go back the old way? Mm. It's do interesting. Or a hybrid model now. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's the catalyst for change. Change circumstances means we change the way we do things and then we see the results of that. And that goes back to you knowing your numbers and efficiencies. Yeah. You have to be able to measure it to change. You know, you exactly. Can't change it if you don't measure it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then using technology, like I've saved so much mileage and time because I've done more Zoom meetings yeah. and drive out and have to see somebody. Yeah, physically. yeah, error, error back, whatever. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Right? With, with whether it's clients, that first meeting, can you do it on Zoom versus driving out there and thinking, well, that was a waste of time. You know, how yeah. many times you wish you hadn't gone there? Now you can yeah. use technology, right? So, and that's, that's where I see it, it's going to change our yes. world. Um, and I'm excited for that and look and look forward to that. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Well, you're, 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 uh, you haven't disappointed with the, uh, with the kind of the, the, the nuggets of, of, uh, information <laughs> because, uh, I think the, the unique, uh, um, uh, kind of personality you are or, or, or business person you are is that you kind of straddle both of these worlds. So you run, you, you know, you're president of a company, but you have a devol nice devolved management, uh, you have a very strong management team, and that's the way you, 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 you kind of had things set up. As you always, or as you constantly said in, in your, your presentations before, you don't know everything about your business, but you have people who know those pieces about your business. So you have experts in place. So I think that's, that's really, really good. But it's nice then to hear from the other side of things, which is really interesting to me is the self pro consulting side of things, which kind of, they, they marry together very well, and you're using your own real experience running you know gelderman over the years in southbrook and giving people actual practical experience and they can look at you and say well i, I trust you because you know what it happens to you and you know you know what you're talking about so i think that's been well, very, very good. and that's where some things i you know have tried within gelderman doesn't work so yeah. i'm not going to recommend that that's I valuable hear. information as well right i tried yeah. this it didn't work that's sometimes as valuable yeah. Why right? I would say, yeah. don't, don't you do what I did. Don't do it. It didn't work. And it's like, that's gold, right? You're not going to waste time and money, you know? Well, it's been great to talk to you. And um, I, 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 I hope we can talk again, reach out again. Um, it's been great to hear how you've navigated this. And, uh, you know, just, just in terms of the really strange, as I said, and unprecedented times, precedented times we're in. Uh, we're still in it. We're in the middle of it, I think, or, or wherever, maybe just past the middle of it. Who knows? And uh, yeah, it's, it's great. So stay safe. And it's been, it's been wonderful to talk to you. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, catch, catch up with, with you again soon, hopefully. Yeah, good. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Nathan. Take care. Thank you.